Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Hardcore HD. HD stands for Human Design. I'm Chell. That's Miko. Hi everyone. And we are still in the world of projectors this week. Stoked on this. One of maybe one of my favorite projectors, famous projectors, because you are also one of my favorite projectors. So maybe I can't say that. Um, one of my favorite famous projectors is Barack Obama. And I'm really excited. I've, wow, I didn't realize how open his chart is. Okay, if you guys are watching on the interwebs, Homeboy is very open, which is, I'm excited to talk about this. But we're going to talk about him in relation to his wife, Michelle Obama. We're going to go over their charts respectively-ish. We'll touch more into that in just a second. Um, but we wanted to bring you a real-life example of a projector entering a relationship like we talked about in our last episode. So let's dive into Brock's chart. Oh wait, are we on a first name basis with him or should we call him former President Obama? I mean, um, he seems Barack chill. Obama? Yeah, <laughs> B.O., got it. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> oh my God. Sorry, we're just gonna call you Brock. Hope that's cool. Thanks. That's it, it's my turn? <laughs> okay. Dive into his chart a little bit. Okay, so. Um, yeah, if you're watching, you can see that he is a projector. So for him, we actually found the exact birth time, which seems to be 7.24 p.m. on the 4th of August, 1961. He was born in Honolulu. And I just heard that this was the start of fake news, <laughs> as Celestina enlightened me, because... I kept thinking that he must have been from from he was he must have been born in a place that is really definitely outside of America, but Hawaii is definitely inside of America. So I don't even know how this whole rumor mill got started of why he may not even be eligible to be president, but yeah. Now we know or now I know and as you can see he has the defined root and a defined emotional solar plexus as his only two defined centers. Everything else is undefined. He doesn't have any open centers. He only he has gates coming out of all of them, which means that he has a certain way of connecting with these topics. It's not completely a blank slate. It's sometimes easier to connect with a center if you do have one gate coming out of it at least because at least this is your one way into that theme or topic within your human design chart or within your life. And other times, even though open centers with no gates coming out of it um, may take longer to learn for the individual that has an open center. So if you, for example, have an open under, uh, open emotional solar plexus and you don't have any gates coming out of it, that's what an open center means, then it may take longer for you to understand what emotions are all about, all the different shades and colors of emotions and because you're taking in all the emotions from the world around you. So you don't really understand it from within yourself you don't have any point of entry for your emotions in this case. And that's why it may take longer for you to even understand what emotions are all about. However, after you've grown and learned about emotions and you become older and wiser as well on the topic of emotions, you start to have a very good insight what on what emotions mean. If you do have centers coming out of an undefined center, if you do have gates coming out of an undefined center, it means that your perspective onto that topic is still very much connected to this one or two or three gates that are coming out of that center or even maybe more gates. But uh, it's still a more narrow perspective on that theme. So that being said, his root and emotional solar plexus are connected through the 4130. So this is half consciously defined and half unconsciously defined, 
which makes him a reflector in both his conscious and unconscious. So he doesn't have any definition within his conscious aspect. If you take those two things apart, neither does he have a definition in his unconscious aspect. So he is a very, very open projector, very empathetic. He really feels the room and with an undefined throat, he's also able to speak with the voice of the people around him. So if you would have a conversation with him after a while, he would pick up the way that you're speaking and he would really be able to speak to you in a way that resonates with you. He, with the 4130, this is one of the pressure channels. So it is putting pressure onto your emotions and as we will see later on with Michelle Obama there is a lot of action happening in that area for both of them so we will dive deeper into that when we take a look at her chart but for now would you like to share a little bit about his history as well or what you see in his chart connected to his history <laughs> I guess a little bit about the the relationship aspect between Barack and Michelle and they've both shared their stories separately in like multiple podcast interviews, multiple interview interviews, their respective books that they've written. So there is a lot of information out there that like of them sharing their story, which I think is really cool. Uh, one, for them to be open about it. And then two, for, for us to, I guess now have that knowledge and like look at their designs together. So pot potentially look at their designs together with that little caveat. So from, I guess, Barack's POV, he met Michelle in 1988. Uh, after his first year of law school, he was looking to apply to different law firms to like intern at. And he applied to the one that Michelle happened to be working at. I, I think she was like one or two years into like into working as an associate at this law firm already. And they, they had both gone to Harvard so they were like, you know what? We're just going to pair them up. They'll be a good fit. And immediately he was like, oh my God, she's, she's really cute. And I would love to ask her out, but also she's my advisor for this summer internship that I'm doing. And I believe he asked her out multiple times and she's like, no, dude. I'm your advisor. That's extremely inappropriate. He asked her maybe three or four times to go out. And I think finally he broke down her wall and she's like, you know what? Fine, kid. She probably didn't say that. She probably said it with a little bit more love, a little bit more affection. You know what? Fine. Like, I'll go out with you. And they ended up going to Baskin Robbins and getting ice cream, which is so sweet. So... That was, that's a little bit of um, him putting the pressure on emotionally, I think, for, for their relationship. Um, Do you know in the, what? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I saw in a documentary that they put a, a, one of his quotes in front of that Baskin Robbins? Because <gasps> he said that after he kissed her, she tasted like chocolate. And I think that's <laughs> like, they put a plate in front of that Baskin Robbins. <laughs> How sweet okay. is that? <laughs> I know. <laughs> so yeah, let's sorry. analyze this, right? He got the he got the internship. That was his invite into this world, right? Of of this law firm. They the law firm was like, okay, cool. This Harvard kid with this, with this other Harvard grad. This seems like a good fit, right? So the invite was there externally for their, I guess, initial relationship of advisor to advisee came externally. And obviously then he put the pressure on and turned up the ante when he was all like, yo, let's go out. Anyway, that's kind of the, what I'm seeing as the intro into this relationship together. Anything else you want to add to that? Yeah, I, I liked also the persistency aspect. He also refers to this when he's when he was running for president, that he it's a good thing that he was so persistent with her because you would want your president to also never give up. So this was one thing that I thought was very sweet. And also when it comes to being a projector, often uh, people would think, 
a projector in this position may not have the energy to do so, to, to be in this position. But having a projector in such a position is a very powerful thing if the projector is balanced or if he's really working on him or herself. And this is something that Michelle is commenting on when it comes to Barack Obama because he, she finds him very graceful, very well dressed, he takes care of himself. Uh, also physically like exercising and nutritional wise he's also doing that I'm not sure how much they're doing on the other levels of for example energetically or spiritually mentally they're for sure doing a lot for it she's a very big advisor or a big very big advocate of continuously educating yourself and she seems to have been someone that um, was always trying to get the absolute best grades so i kind of have a feeling you uh maybe dove deeper into his history while i dove a bit deeper into her history i don't know if that's the case but if so that would be very funny because we didn't plan that <laughs> so i was watching a documentary um, which was revolving more around her life but what i did see regarding their life and you did read the books, so you have that way ahead of me. <laughs> um, but what I saw in that documentary was also that they had their own garden in the White House. So she was really adamant in having her own vegetable and maybe even fruit garden because she wanted, and she's also advocating for that when it comes to health in the society um, and especially in kids. She really wants kids to take care of themselves. And this was something that was always very important for her when it came to her kids to keep them grounded, but to also have them follow a healthy diet and exercise routines. And so, yeah, they're definitely on the, on the horse for that aspect of things. And they're also extremely family oriented. So that's another thing the, that uh, Michelle brought her mother into the White House, which has never happened before as far as I have heard. So they kind of called her first grandma <laughs> instead of first lady. And uh, she did this because she wanted her kids to still be taken care of by someone that she trusts, that is part of the family and that she really looks up to a lot. Not that she didn't do that with any employees, but it's a very different story, of course, when you give your kids to into the hands of your mom that took care of you, that raised you, and then to have her take care of your kids if you cannot be there. Even though she really tried to be there as much as she could, she was a very present, present mom, which I heard... For her, she was struggling with that aspect when it came to Barack Obama, that uh, he was not as present as she would have wished him to be. And I, yeah, depending on which design we're going to look at with Michelle, this could have been more challenging um, or less challenging, but just from a personal, like a, a human perspective, I think it's an immense strain to be in the public eye on that level as the first lady or as a president because there's nothing you can do right and even though there's nothing you can do right I think that everyone always tries to find fault or find mistakes this is a family that managed to stay quite low on the scan like I don't think there were any scandals about them while they were in, in the candidacy and, or in the presidency and in the White House. And this is something that is very rare. They have always been looked at as graceful and um, very well-spoken, very... M Michelle Obama was looked at as one of the most modern first ladies or as the first first lady that was this modern and... 
um, this eloquent and uh, there was, of course, uh, Hillary Clinton as well, but she had a political agenda herself. So Michelle Obama didn't have that part. She had her own passions, her own her own drive desires, and she kind of put that on the on on the back for the time that Barack Obama was president. So I think all of that dynamic is an additional is so much stress on a relationship. So how 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 do you see that? To and like you're saying, and being in the public eye, right? Like these are two people. Okay, so let's go back with this was probably the first presidency that I was old enough to like understand what was happening, right? And like watch the debates because I had to like report about it in school. And I was in high school, I think, through his first term and then like end of high school. That sounds right. End of, or beginning of college for his second term. I think I voted him in second term. Yeah, that was my, actually, that was my first election. That was dope. Um, so all of that to say is they were very much in the public eye, but I think this was probably also the first presidency where the first lady, I don't want to say the first presidency where the first lady actually did something, but like she went beyond the role of just like hosting dignitaries and just being the face, right? Like she actually wanted to make an impact, which I think is really cool. And being the first African-American presidential family, I think also put that added burden on them, that added stress of having to do everything quote unquote right. But it was also a really cool platform for both of them. And I, I believe Michelle Obama kind of just became like this fashion icon and was really helped, was really able to help elevate um, other African Americans in the sense of like the jewelry that she wore, the designers that she used, the fashion that she chose. And it was a really cool platform to be able to see that and have her elevate others who may not have been elevated otherwise because she used that platform well. So I know we were talking about Barack, but I feel like they come as a duo because they did have such an impact on the country during that time period. And even now, what, like a decade later since he's almost a decade later since he's been out of office. So it's it's just kind of cool to see the impact that both of them together have created, not just on the nation, but literally worldwide. I mean, you're in Germany. They, he's never been your president. You know what I mean? Like, and you're still like, oh my God, these people are pretty cool. So I think that that shows you the the gravity of the impact that they had, also the the pressures that were on them during that time period. So with all of that said, let's take a look at Michelle's charts because we couldn't necessarily narrow it down to which one it potentially is. Most of the day, she comes up as a generator, but if she was born before 5 a.m., she very much comes up as a projector. So we don't have a definitive time. The interwebs do not have a definitive time. Michelle, if you're listening and you happen to have your birth certificate easily accessible, shoot us a message on Instagram and let us know, and we're happy to redo this for you. But we're doing the best with what we got, and my necklace pendulum today was potentially a little bit unreliable but she came back in the end and gave us one time so we're still going to explore both times and both um perspective charts but we don't know and we're not going to pretend that we know so miko's going to take it away and talk about two options of what michelle obama can be and how that how that interacts with her husband and the the beginnings of their relationship and how that blossomed over time okay take it away yeah it, it was also very difficult because as you mentioned i have of course heard of barack obama and michelle obama and also a little bit about the children and also his very famous dog <laughs> but Apart from that, I don't, I haven't read the autobiography from Michelle, as I've mentioned, and I don't have that much insight into them as, as individuals or as how, f as far as their personality goes. So I did see that 
Barack Obama was very still close to humans, like to to the to the public instead of just uh, um, up at the top. He was also connecting with them. So there was one very famous picture where he was giving his hand to one of his employees just by passing by. And Michelle Obama seems to have been the same way that um, she also, I heard that she snuck out of the White House quite a few times <laughs> to be part of the normal quote-unquote life. And there was one very big incident where she definitely wanted to celebrate this and she took her daughters with her she snuck out of the white house and she stood in front of the white house when the gay marriage was finally legalized in america this was something that she felt very very strongly about and she wanted to see the white house in the colors of the rainbow so yeah she stood in front of it with her daughters and she she just wanted to celebrate that moment because inclusivity is some it's a big big topic for her so no matter if it's racial inclusivity or gender inclusivity or sexual preference inclusivity she just wants rights for everyone and um to everyone just be accepted as an individual as who they are and not be judged by anything superficial so to me superficial is skin color it's where you come from it's um your sexual preferences and i don't mean superficial as in it doesn't matter but it's just that you shouldn't judge someone by that because no matter where you come from no matter what your skin color no matter what your sexual preferences and all of those things your gender or whatever it may be who you are in your core is what matters what you've made from all of that is what matters how you treat people that don't have a benefit for you per se that's what matters because a lot of times when i see someone that is in a high position and they would for example just treat a homeless person on the street with a full heart and kindness this is what matters because that homeless person may not be able to do anything for you in the sense of um i'm not sure if i'm expressing myself correctly here but they they may not be able to do anything for you but you're still kind and caring to them or nice you're not you're not disrespectful so a lot of people that are in high positions they tend to have an arrogancy about them or tend to be disrespectful also to waiters or to to people that they feel have no importance to them but as soon as they're sitting opposite someone that has some kind of benefit to them they are very nice to those individuals so this for me is a very big character flaw and i think this is definitely something that both michelle and barack obama have been able to show that they have this heart for for everyone and they really um, wanted to make a change in the world and still want to make a change in the world so in this case we can see that michelle obama is with one time that we got she's a generator with her with a 360 channel defined going from the sacral to the root and then she has this the root defined going to the emotional solar plexus so in even in this combination there are sometimes more or less gates that are defined within this connection of of solar plexus to the root so it is a bit challenging to go into detail uh, of both charts but we will just assume and and see what we could see if she's this or that and then she also has a connection from her ajna to the throat which to me makes sense in the way that um, she did write her own biography and she seems to have been amazing at giving speeches and i haven't seen 
many of them. I've seen a few of them and what I've seen, yes, they are very, very good. And this was apparently a bit of a competition between Barack Obama and Michelle Obama, where they tried to like one up them, one up the other by giving a better speech than the other. So, and they're both extremely good in speeches, definitely. So this is something where this may have come from, where she uses her own personal stories and experiences and translates that into stories that are motivational and inspiring to others around her. This could be one of the things, however, if you're looking at the other time of birth, she doesn't have this connection. So it's very difficult, as I said, to really make pinpointed statement. The thing that does seem to stay consistent is the 3955. And the thing that changes when you take a different birth time, so in this case, the 5 a.m. one, is that she becomes a projector. And she has the 4426 connection, which connects the ego to the spleen. And I do like this, maybe I'm biased, but I do like seeing her as a projector <laughs> and seeing both of them as this projector power couple, because this is kind of leaning onto what we've shared earlier in the episode, like in the, in the last episode, where you would have two projectors and one of them would have to... <laughs> One of them would have to make a move. So if you were just watching, you could see balloons flying through my screen because I did the peace sign. But if you're not, go check it out on YouTube or Spotify. So we have those two projectors, potentially two projectors, who are in a relationship and one of them has to ask the other one out. And did you hear about the proposal, the moment that they that Barack Obama proposed to her? My understanding, it was pretty chill. They were at a restaurant and the waiter brought out their dessert and there was also a ring on the platter. That's the extent of my knowledge around the proposal. Yeah, so apparently they... <laughs> They had a bit of a debate before that, and she was kind of, um, I think it was about getting married, and she had a very clear idea of when she wanted to get married and how, and like the time frame and everything. So she stepped into lawyer mode, and he is also educated in... <laughs> <laughs> in this field so um they were kind of having more of more or less of debates with one another instead of just having a friendly conversation and then suddenly this ring comes out and at the end uh, when he opens the box he says this ought to shut you up <laughs> as his final win of the debate kind of love that <laughs> i know it's cute so I don't know. I I think um, even if you look at it together, if you come, if you take both charts together, you can see that they're defining their G center together. They kind of create a nine and O nowhere to go relationship. So they're very whole within just one another as a couple. Michelle also talked about how he would be able to read her mind. So I don't know if she was able to do that, but this is a very big, okay, undefined Ajna and undefined head thing that people with undefined head and undefined Ajnas are able to do that. But it's also a very projector thing that you really can feel into the other and you can, because the projector aura has this pinpointedness about it. It's really taking this is why it's recommended for projectors to do one-on-one -on -one, uh, work with individuals because when a projector sits opposite you it's as if they're really digging into your g center so into your self they really see you for who you are if they are aligned and they can really just feel feel you for who you are as well so this is what the projector aura is here to do it's supposed to go directly into the g-center and uh, be able to really see who you are and yeah i i i would like them to be two projectors <laughs> but let's go back to the 
Generator. Only a little bit of projector bias here. It's fine, guys. Just a only little a little bit. bit. I mean, yeah, it's a big thing to have two projectors together because this is, as we mentioned in the previous episode, it is, it is a relationship that is, it's supposed to be the way that a projector should be in a relationship, not necessarily with another projector, but with a projector or a manifester, or a non sacral being should be with a non sacral being, although they are defining the sacral when they come together. So we've also mentioned this in the other one, in the other episode, that they still have the sexual energy about them because they're defining the sacral together, but it is something that they need to discover with one another in this case. So if she is a projector. So it is just, I think the reason why I I, I think it's um, nice to see it's because it's often talked about, but it doesn't often happen because not a lot of times the same type would go for the same type and they are similar in their designs if you if you do take the projector one because they even have those two centers that they can relate to there's the root and the emotional solar plexus this is where they have common ground and i like that she has the ego defined in this chart so yeah i'm biased in many ways in this one <laughs> as you can see how do you feel about it i love a good ego defined but uh, i don't know i the general I really don't know. Also, I could see if you go back to the projector one really quick again, for just for you guys who are watching, I could see her being a 6'3 as well, right? Like I, I can feel the 6'3 aspect of it because I feel like she really has been a role model for so many. And I don't know, I don't know how much investigatory stuff she's done in her world potentially as a one three as a generator right but yeah not that i'm rooting for one one way or the other but i could see this chart being an aligned chart potentially but also let's explore the generator side of things because that can also be really cool and really beautiful in a different way yeah and i i, I mean you make a good point it's uh you can really twist and turn it into both direction because you can either have her um, as a projector with the ego defined, with this root defined and the emotional solar plexus. So that's three motors. That's a lot of energy. So she doesn't need to be a generator to have all of that energy, which you can see radiating from within her. So I think that she could have this willpower as well. And so Obama was once asked, what are the three things that you're sure of? And he said, death, taxes, and that Michelle Obama will never run for presidency. <laughs> and everyone is so sad about that. So I can see that if she is the projector with the will center, the ego defined, then that's not going to happen. <laughs> Pretty sure it's not going to happen because she set her, her heart to it and that's it. However, if she does have the generator profile, I've also heard that she was someone, because you were mentioning the investigation aspect, and she loves to read, she loves to dive deep into knowledge, and she always wanted the, to be the best in, in everything. So she had, there was one thing where it was, I think, in kindergarten or preschool where she had to color something in and she didn't get an A and then she asked to redo the test. So that's the level that she went to. Um, I also like the cross, the right angle cross of laws in this one because it's so, uh, it speaks so much of their history, the fact that they both decided to study law and that she wants to have equality in the gender aspects, the cultural, the racial, so all of that. And the sacral center is unconsciously defined. So it is not something that she may have had full awareness of it, but it is definitely something that is there. There's a lot of, yeah, there's, there's a lot of energy in the sacral center. It is something that is consciously defined so in, in her 60th gate and it's in her son. So this is something that is very important in her 
human design chart. And she also has the third gate in her earth, in her unconscious earth. So the 360 channel is something that changes their mind very quickly. So if she is a generator, what can happen regarding this presidency thing is that she is very, very convinced that she will not do it. But at some point in time, maybe something will trigger her and she feels like it is the right time and it switches completely 360, like, okay, 180 degrees, not 360, but 180 degrees. So full half circle, not full circle, but half circle. <laughs> And she may then run for presidency. So this would be preferred in that aspect, because I do think that she would be an amazing, amazing president. And mo many times when they were asked of uh, the, if like the, how do you call that? They asked the public if they like a person. The popularity, she, like a popularity yeah. vote. Kind of yeah, situation. Yeah, 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 yeah. This exactly. So she was uh, sometimes even ahead of Obama, um, Barack Obama, that way. <laughs> so yeah, I thought that was that was also very interesting. But yeah, there are many many ways you can, as you can see, you can twist and turn it. Um, it would be really great to know her exact birth time, but I can also understand if this is not shared because it does reveal a lot about you astrologically, human design wise. So I can understand that people are keeping it hush hush. And in this case, she is a Capricorn. <laughs> so she does have this, again, a biased, uh, but she does have this, um, th this partially stubbornness and also this dedication and diving deep into things. So again, this would reflect the one three. It is a very, very personal profile, the one three, because it's all about her self development. It doesn't mean that she's self centered, but it is a very personal cross. So to me, the six three also connects more, but I've also seen her generator chart with a six, two. So it is, it is very difficult to say a lot about it. I mean, I think it's okay that we don't have definitive answers though, because it's cool to be able to see one, how they, how they relate interpersonally, whether she's a generator or a projector. And then it's also kind of cool to be able to see that there are different personality traits that a person may exude that may or may not be reflected in their chart, but also you can wiggle and finagle a chart to meet that person too. And I think that that's also interesting, right? Because I feel like with Enneagram and Myers-Briggs, so many people stay in that box of what they are, who they are. And I feel like it's kind of the opposite with human design, right? It shows you your potential, and you don't have to stay in the box. You can be who you are. And yeah, there are some things that will be heavily reflected in you, but there's also a lot of learning and unlearning that needs to be done within your chart as well. So keep that in, the, in your mind as you're thinking through all of this and just listening to us. And yeah, there's, there's just more growth, I think, when you have that perspective going into it versus feeling like you're stuck in a box. I'm a projector and that's all. I'm a generator and that's all, you know. Yeah, I really like that point that you just made because uh, I've also heard people being scared after their reading or feeling locked down after their reading. And that's when they often come to me. They, they just want uh, to understand more about it and I'm able to take that away from them this being scared because it's not locked down and this is you really said something very powerful there that you can wiggle it yes um, and that can be interpreted as a bad thing but it in my opinion it's a really fantastic thing because you you can choose to go into different directions and this was something that Ra was criticized for that he said there is no choice and I don't believe that I strongly believe 
that we always have a choice. We can always choose to go into one direction or the other. There is a certain, um, as I said, as we said, you can see the potential of people, but you still have a choice not to go down your potential. <laughs> you still have a choice to go down the shadow aspects of you. And um, I think I think this is this is the great thing about human design that it is not just this is you black and white finished and just like that we're wrapping up another episode of our i don't even know what we're calling this but it's our series through the types and different perspectives through the types yeah anything else that's it thank you everyone for listening and being here with us until next week guys ciao bye